caught altogether 17 uh, uh, independent, wise, intelligent judges have uh, thought deeply about her case. I have to tell you, in the Netherlands, we do not have juries. This would be terrible. Imagine men in the street deciding who goes to jail and so on. No, we have uh, a board of wise magistrates who are, of course, totally independent and extremely wise and knowledgeable. Of course, they've all, they're all lawyers and they've all been to law school and actually they all come from the same small segment of society. So they're not actually that independent, I think. But uh, c c the 17 judges have been through her papers and all of them have co confirmed that she's a murderer, a terrible murderer. And coincidentally, nearly all of them have names like this, Fockens, Fockemer, Focking. You might, uh, if you're a non-Dutch person, kind of recognize what this word might be related to in English. And uh, this is very strange. Anyway, there are many strange coincidences in this. In fact, it's all about chance and coincidence, because I think it was just bad luck this lady had. It was an unlikely coincidence. How unlikely? I will say something about later. Uh, these are some people involved in the case from uh, the early days. Um, uh, this is a, f a philosopher of science called uh, Tom Derksen. And this is his sister called uh, Meta de No. And in the early days, these were the two single people together with maybe one rather alternative journalist and maybe just one or two other people who were convinced that something was wrong in this case and started getting involved in it and finding more and more out about it. Now, uh, the reason this person and this person uh, got involved was actually family because here's uh, these two persons' brother, a guy called uh, Wim Derksen, who's actually a fairly well-known uh, Socialist Party politician, which is also interesting. And uh, he is the husband of uh, somebody I have never seen a picture of. Now, this is a movie, The Unknown Woman. Uh, anyway, uh, Wim Derksen here is the, the husband of a lady called, uh, I almost... Uh, hesitate to say her name because I'd probably be uh, uh, arrested for libel if I mention her name in this context. A woman called uh, Arda Derksen, who was the uh, chief uh, pediatrician, so the uh, head, uh, head uh, uh, doctor, the chef de clinique at a hospital in The Hague back in 2001 when everything started. So this unknown lady, Arda Derksen, has got something very much to do with our story. And uh, it was like at, the fa at family parties and at the kitchen table and so on that these, uh, uh, this uh, a brother-in-law of this lady and this sister-in-law of this lady uh, heard all kinds of gossip and stories about the case as it evolved and started to get uh, uh, uncomfortable feelings. I think that's the uh, end of those pictures. So now I, I, I have no idea what the time is. I've switched off my iPhone. Anybody know what the time is? Does it say? Oh, it says there in big red letters. Okay. Yep. Uh, pl please uh, ask me questions anytime you want. Um, I, I don't know if I go too fast or too slow. There are so many things can be said in this case, so many morals uh, and stories which can be told. Anyway, here's a quick uh, overview of uh, the f what are certainly facts. In uh, 2001, at the Juliana Children's Hospital in The Hague, uh, The Hague is a large village, perhaps you know, but it's also uh, the seat of the Dutch government and the seat of uh, international war crimes tribunals and considers itself the international capital of law. Uh, at a children's hospital at that, in that city, actually village, I should say, sorry, uh, on the 4th of September, that's a week before the 11th of September, which was my 50th birthday, which I thought was rather mean, but a baby died overnight, sort of unexpectedly. Uh, uh, in uh, the newspapers which started reporting on these events in the months, weeks and months later, one got the idea that this was a children's hospital and you could imagine your little cousin or your little daughter or whatever being in hospital with a broken arm or something like that and horrible things being done to them by a wicked 
angel of death. Uh, actually, this hospital uh, specialized somewhat as a specialist children's hospital in uh, very young children with mm, birth defects. And uh, this little baby, Amber, was not an exception. She, uh, a specialist, have later said to me, the miracle about baby B. Amber, who died when she was about six months old, I think, was not that she died then, but that she'd stayed alive so long. Uh, they had recently fixed her, fixed her heart, and uh, at least that was something they had sort of patched up, and they'd also told the parents that she would be able to go home in a few days, probably. Perhaps it was not a wise thing to have said, but it, they had said that. Uh, there were still terrible things wrong with it, and it had been in and out of hospital ever since it had been born. And in Holland, we say that there are focuses for the push. I don't know how to turn. Well, that little bird is for the cat. You can, I suppose, imagine what I mean. Well, uh, that death was recorded as a natural death. It was an unexpected event, but mm, the child seemed to be recovering okay from its last operation, but actually the nurses uh, close to the child had uh, knew that in the last few days it had been getting worse in some respects, uh, all kinds of things becoming more difficult for this little thing. And... Um, so actually, nobody was terribly surprised, though of course the doctors handling the case were, were, were uh, um, well, embarrassed, I could say. On the next day, a, a nurse uh, of the ward on which baby Amber was went to the chief pediatrician, who was our uh, unknown woman I've just shown you, uh, with, a, with a bad feeling because uh, Lucia had been on duty that last night. And that other nurse had the feeling that Lucy had been on duty several times when recently children had actually died or nearly died on the ward, uh, which at that moment, at that time, seemed to be a kind of unusual thing. There had been, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, two, from two years before till one year before, no child had died on that ward, and in the last year there had been, like, half a dozen deaths. And every time Lucia... Uh, uh, well, heroine, main person, or villain, whichever you like. Uh, she had been on duty every time. And Lucia, as I mentioned, was a strong and powerful and a rem a marcante, remarkable woman who uh, definitely inspired uh, sort of love and adoration among some of her colleagues and, and jealousy and, and hate and discomfort among others. And she was certainly one who stood out in the crowd, which is not a good thing to do in Holland where we like to have everything very neat and cut off at the uh, Maifeld, as they say, like a grass, beautiful manicured lawn. No heads should stick up, otherwise. Uh, Lucia was uh, about 10 or years older than most of her colleague nurses. Um, she already had a, a, a daughter of her own. Um, she had had a very disturbed or tr troubled childhood in a very dysfunctional family and uh, mother and maybe her father too had been alcoholics and all kinds of things were pretty bad and uh, indeed she had even been a uh, uh, had had a lover boy boyfriend in her teens for a couple of years in uh, Vancouver Canada and uh, so she had been, in some sense, a prostitute for a year or two, uh, 10 or 15 years earlier. Uh, and uh, this was known, and there was gossip about her. Well, uh, our chief pediatrician uh, this, this definitely decided to check up on this uh, coincidence business and did some statistics with an Excel spreadsheet, and nobody has ever seen them. Nobody knows what she did or how she did it. But uh, she came up with a chance of one in seven billion or something, or seven million, I can't remember. But actually nobody knows what. Uh, uh, and decided it was not a coincidence. It could not be a coincidence that Lucia had been present every single time in the last year when uh, a child had died on the ward. And that was about half a dozen occasions. Uh, Lucia was a full-time nurse, so she was. Uh, so you, there are three shifts in a day. You do one of three shifts, but of course.